for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our passage, if it uh, works. There it is, Luke 24 and verse 36 to 49. We've just read that. And uh, if you want to know the subject, it's that, experiencing peace from the risen living Saviour. Because uh, this is a day of rejoicing, knowing peace and contentment and gladness and joy. But um, my burden has been, as I've been thinking about uh, today, of the things that maybe could dampen that joy. And the things that could take from us the peace the Lord wants us to know on this resurrection lovely day. And the verses that I want us to particularly look at are the verses 38 and verse 39 of Luke 24, where Jesus has these words, and I feel very much these are the words either for folk, some folk here, or maybe folk hearing online, or maybe those who are here in the tapes or whatever's recorded. These are the words, the words of the Jesus. And uh, they come in verse 38, where Jesus says, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hand. And that's what I want us to do. Why are you troubled, Jesus asked. Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands. And I want us to do that. I want us to look at the hands of the Lord. And that's going to be our subject the hands of Christ. And when he says, look, because in the hands and what they speak to us of gives us the peace and the joy that maybe Satan wants to take from us on this special day. Because first of all, I notice this, that the hands of Christ are the place of salvation. We read that in Isaiah 59 and verse 1. I'm going to quote from the authorized version or the amplified version because that's uh, uh, a little bit clearer. And it simply says this The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. In fact, Elsewhere in Isaiah, in Isaiah 49 and verse 16, the Lord says, see, look, see. Behold, is the Hebrew, behold, look, see. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. And what he's really saying is, why are you troubled? Why are doubts bubbling to the surface of your mind? Look at my hands. These are the hands, Christian, that have saved you. Don't you realize you're mine? I've saved you. Lifted you from the consequences of your sin. Set your feet upon a rock. These hands, because they were wounded on the cross, because they've lifted you from their sin, these are the place of salvation. Why are you troubled? Why are doubts coming to your minds? You're mine. And I'm wondering if there are some here, 
And the Lord would say, cease your fears. Calm your doubts. You are mine. And I'm wondering whether there's someone here or even listening on the tape and taking the peace, the joy that could be yours on this lovely Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, is those niggling doubts. Am I really saved? Am I really forgiven? And it may be Satan wants to come to you and says, huh, call yourself a Christian, think you're saved, think you're forgiven, and you did that? Think again. And doubts have been so. And you're doubting. Well, I was saved, but am I still saved? The Lord had forgiven me, but will he forgive me now? And the Lord says, why are you troubled? Why do doubt rise in your minds? Look at my hands. I've paid the full price for all your sin. And maybe Satan wants to say, ah, oh, yeah, but yeah, all the sins you, you committed before you came to Christ, but um, what about... Since he's brought you to salvation. What about sins? What about these future sins? <laughs> All right, your past sins, yes, but well, I want to tell you. When Jesus died for your sins, listen, all your sin was future sin. And he died for all your sin. Why are you troubled? Why do doubts linger in your mind? Lord. At my hands I've paid the price for all your sin. And I want to say, don't doubt your salvation, dear believer. Because of what the Lord says. He says in John 8 and verse 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. You see, none, man nor demon. John 6 verse 37, Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me I will never Drive away. Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands, the place of salvation. In fact, Paul put it this way in Philippians 1 verse 6. He said, he, and he does the work of salvation, and if, if he doesn't, then you're not saved. But when he works, he does a perfect work. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Why are you troubled? Stop doubting. Stop it. Stop doubting and believe. Look at my hands. But the hands of the Lord are not only the place of salvation. We find in the word of God that the hands of Christ are also what I've called the place of sanctification. And uh, don't worry too much about the, these clever theological words. What is sanctification? Well, uh, we get a lovely picture, if you like, of sanctification in Jeremiah uh, chapter 18 and the early verses 1 through 6. But verse 6 simply says this, Like clay 
in the hand is in the hand of the potter, so are you, believer, in my hand. And the picture was that the potter was molding, shaping uh, the clay and He's, 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 he's got something in his mind. He's got a vision of a pot or a vase or something. And he's, he's, he's shaping this old clay and he's going to make his vision in his mind a reality on the wheel. And that is a lovely illustration of practical sanctification. You see, it's a great illustration because we are being, all Christians are being molded. We're being shaped. And what is that? Well, Romans 8 verse 29 simply says this. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. And you see, I am, and if you're a believer, if you know the Lord, you are, we are being molded, we're being shaped into the image and being conformed to the lovely likeness of Jesus. God has a, a picture, like the pot, if you like, of in his mind, and it's the picture of the beauty and the loveliness of Jesus, and he's molding, shaping us and sanctifying us, making us more like Jesus. And uh, that's what we're doing. I think I actually put that on the notes, didn't I? Yes, I did. We're being molded into the image of Christ, Romans 8, verse 29. And uh, I'm reminded of the illustration. Uh, I'm reminded of the illustration of someone who went to uh, see some of the great uh, sculptures around of this particular famous sculptor. And they saw, when they went into this display, this exhibition, all these beautiful things that he just sculpted and made. Be there, there was particularly uh, a, a sculpture of a horse galloping. And the way he he made this out of marble or stone, I don't know what, he, but he, he'd sculpted it out of this, and, and he said it was almost as if the, the horse was moving. And the sculptor was there, and uh, he, he, he said, how, how do you get a, a rugged bit of, of, of stone or marble and, and make such a beautiful horse out of it? And he says, well, I just get my chisel and my hammer, and I just knock away the bits that don't look like a horse. <laughs> and that's what the Lord's doing. That's what the Lord's doing. He's, in your life, Christian, in my life, he's just knocking away the bits that don't look like Jesus. That's what he's doing. That's practical sanctification. Let me just give a note for the, you theologians. I know the Bible talks past tense about we have been sanctified. The Bible also talks about a continuing process. We are being sanctified. How do we see that? Well, of course, positionally, God sees his own sanctified, perfect, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. That's why we can approach his throne boldly, with confidence, for we come not as we are, but we come as we are seen, clothed in the loveliness and righteousness of Christ. And because of him, we're accepted in the beloved. We are positionally seen perfect with God. He sees none of my failings and faults. He sees me clothed in the beauty of Jesus. But that's positionally or legally, but also practically that ongoing, that we are being sanctified, we are being molded, and this um, 
ongoing sanctification, this practical sanctification of being molded and shaped and conformed to the loveliness of Jesus. That is sanctification being in process. Now, this is the point. This practical sanctification, listen carefully, is often painful. Hurts. Is not pleasant. And in the process of being conformed to the image of Christ, the that something of the beauty and loveliness of Jesus might be seen in us, he allows our caring, pruning Heavenly Father, he allows us to go through trials, hardship, pain, tears, misunderstanding, and it hurts. And the message comes from our enemy. He doesn't love me, does he? He can't love me. He wouldn't have allowed me to be going through this for such a long time. I wouldn't be knowing this suffering, this pain, this trial, these appointments, ongoing it seems, and all this trouble, if he really loved me, he wouldn't let me go through this, would he? And the message this morning is, beloved, why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise to the surface of your minds? Look, it's my hands. Look. It's my hands. In fact, the writer to the Hebrews, whoever that was, some people think it was Barnabas, I have no idea. The Bible doesn't say so, let's not guess. But the writer to the Hebrews, whoever he was, wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews, in fact, I think I got it on the screen. Let me just see whether I did. Yeah, there it is. Hebrews 12, verses 5 and 6. It says this, My son, get it? My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines, Greek chastens, the Lord chastens the one he loves and chastens everyone he accepts as a son. So the trials, the problems, the heartaches, the pain, the suffering, the problems are not proof that he doesn't love you, quite the reverse, in fact. It's proof that he does love you. It's proof that you are his. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves. And he chastens every one of those he accepts as his son. Why are you troubled? Why are doubts rising in your minds? Look, it's my hands. I'm reminded of um, Jesus said, if we bear fruit, if we uh, bear fruit, what's going to happen? Oh, great. John 15, it's not great. Because he prunes. If you're beginning to show signs of, hey, you really are getting on in the Lord now, aren't you? And uh, 
He waits for that. If you're young in Christ, you'll have very few problems. The Lord will answer your prayer straight away. Uh, when you're young in Christ, you just come to Christ, you'll think that things work out. You think, oh, this is great being a Christian, marvelous. But as you begin to mature and you bear fruit and you get, what do you say? Uh, he prunes. You get the cutting edge. And it's painful. And why does he do it? That we might be more fruitful for the glory of the Lord. You see, and it's worth remembering who holds the pruning shears? My father is the gardener. He prunes. Not Satan. Not Satan. He. And he knows exactly how much to prune. So, don't let Satan give you his lies. Why are you troubled, said Jesus? Why are doubts rising in your minds? Look at my hands, the place of sanctification. I have to say one other thing, because it's all very well saying that. But I want to say the hands of Christ are not only the place of salvation, not only the place of sanctification, but it's important to remember that the hands of Christ are the place of support. We read that in uh, Psalm 37 and verse 34. We read these lovely words, no, 24 rather. The Lord upholds him with his hand. Now, we've just been thinking and we've, uh, there it is, the Lord upholds him with his hand. And, uh, We've learned that the Lord allows, and if your faith is strong enough, even sends, if you can just grab that one, if you can't, just hang on to the allows bit. But however, he actually sends. He allows and sends trials to mold us into the likeness of his son. But, Someone might say, you might say, that's all very well, but how can I cope? I've never been through this or anything like this before. Yeah, I've had trials and problems and the Lord's brought me out of them, but there's been nothing like this. How can I cope? And the answer is look at my hands. Why are you troubled? Why are doubts coming to the surface of your minds? Look at my hands, the place of support. These hands will carry you. These hands will support you. These hands will be there. And we have to remember the hands that saved us, the hands that mold us, are the same hands that will support us and carry us through whatever we're facing. These hands. But... Uh, I wanted to just enlarge a little bit on that because we read in Psalm 63, verses 7 and 8, it's, uh, the psalmist says, Because you, the Lord, because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. I'm minded, of course, that he says, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. And you, and you, and you get the idea of the little bird tucked away in, protected in mum's wings and the big mother bird's wings and, and uh, 
But I want to say something. That little bird is in the dark. And has learned that the dark actually is rather comforting, not fearful. Because I'm protected by the wings. But your right hand upholds me. When it talks about the Lord's right hand in Scripture, it's always worth remembering. You, you, you get a lot of things in Scripture. You get the Lord's finger, get the Lord's hand, get the Lord's arm. Uh, but his right hand always speaks of his power. That's what it speaks of. It's his fighting hand, his defending hand, his powerful hand. Not his left hand, it's his right hand. Your right hand upholds me. Why are you troubled? Why a doubt rising in your minds? Look. Of my hands. I'll see you through. I'll carry you through. I'll support you. A place of support. I'm reminded, of course, that uh, we need to look, when we're thinking of the Lord's right hand, at Isaiah 41. If you've got your Old Testament there, look, look at Isaiah 41. And uh, if not, just listen. I'll, I'll read it to you. And you'll see again there's a reference to the Lord's right hand. Um, verse 10 of Isaiah 41 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's uh, verse 10. We get it there. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear. I'm with you. Don't be dismayed. I'm your God. I'll strengthen you, help you. I'll uphold you with my right hand. Verse 10. But hang on, look at verse 13. Verse 13 says this. I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says, do not fear, I will help you. Can you see that? So verse 10, my right hand, i.e. the Lord's. Verse 13, your right hand. So, so what? So, I give you this illustration. And I'm going to make it, hopefully, so you remember. Sweetheart, can you come here? If I'm walking down the road with my wife, I might be like that. Or we might be like that. If I'm like that, it's my right hand and her left hand. If I'm like that, Face to face. Face to face. I, my right hand, will hold your right hand face to face with the Lord. So, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. That's what we read, don't we? We read it, don't we, in Hebrews and chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. It says this, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, 
scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Inference is, if you don't keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and don't consider him, you will lose heart and grow weary. And the way not to lose heart and grow weary is to keep your eyes upon Jesus. Why are you troubled? Why are doubts rising in your mind? Get your vision back. Look, look, look at me. Look at my hands. Or you'll grow weary. You will. You'll lose heart. And our enemy will come in. And get it. The hands of Christ, the place of salvation, the place of sanctification, and the place of support. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Beloved, why have you been troubled? Why are doubts rising in your mind? On this Easter Sunday, will you say, no more doubt? I'm not going to doubt anymore. I'm going to look at you and trust you. Because your hands have saved me. Your hands are molding me. And your hands <coughs> will support me. And that is exactly what our last hymn says. No more doubts. Let's look for those no more doubts as we sing. Can we, Carol? Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Look and make it your prayer that we won't doubt anymore. Comes, I think, in verse 2. You'll get there.